What's up again, everybody? Well, 2021 is rapidly coming to a close, and 2022 is approaching like crazy. We're almost there, and because we're entering a new year, I think it's the perfect opportunity for us to revisit the topic of starting in the game of Flesh and Blood. So today we're going to make a full and complete starter guide to the world of Flesh and Blood. How can you get into the game if you are literally on square one, never played, only heard about it, or how you can kind of move into the game even further, maybe uh, what you should pick up as far as boxes or starter decks or uh, where you should play either online or in person. We're going to talk about all of that in this video, and I want to say this, in the description there's going to be just a ton of links for everything that we can just possibly cover. Everything I can cover that I can put in link form, I'm gonna to try to link down in the description. I'm also going to, if you can look way up in the top right, I'm gonna put like little pop-up ads or pop-up little things that you can click to take you to different resources as well. So as you go through the video, you'll see those things pop up and maybe kind of link over to a great place to buy one specific item or play in one specific event, that sort of stuff. So literally, we're gonna cover a ton of topics Hopefully, I can get this in a nice, succinct time frame as well. So, let's get started. Before we get too far into it, though, thank you so much for those of you who've hit the subscribe button. If you would like to join into this wonderful hodgepodge of people, into this beautiful community that we fostered, I would highly recommend you hit the subscribe button. Come join in the, uh, in the description. There's a link to the Discord. Come join in the Discord where we play this game and talk about this game. And if you really want to support the channel, those people who are patrons, are the absolute MVPs of all of supporting. They're the best. So if you want to join as well, I would be very thankful. Okay, so you are day one thinking about getting into Flesh and Blood. You're not sure where to start. You're not sure what you should buy. Should you buy a big box? Should you buy like a starter deck? Should you uh, ask for singles? Like what's the, what's the best place to start? I'm going to give you my opinion. I think, and I've thought about this a lot, I think the best place to start, absolute number one place to start the game of Flesh and Blood is with these Blitz decks, okay? These are Blitz decks designed by the Legend Story Studios team. Um, they released for the most recent two sets, and they are one Blitz deck for each hero in each set. So we have all the heroes from the Monarch set and all the heroes from the Tales of Aria set, okay? Every hero that is in the game. By the way, if you don't know, Flesh and Blood is a hero-centric card game where you play as a hero that has uh, a weapon and equipment and uh, a class. Generally, they have like a game plan that they play to. It's incredibly engaging, it's a lot of fun, and each hero feels different and unique in their own right. Now, if you're curious uh, about these different heroes, I'll walk you through them very, very quickly because uh, some of these are are really interesting heroes. Like for example, Bolton here is a light warrior. So you can see there on the back. Um, all of these Blitz decks are like 10 to $12, which is why they're a great way to pick up and play. And inside of this uh, little box, and I'll show you, because I think this one I've been playing a lot of, inside of this box is everything you need to play as this hero. And I've shuffled and used this deck, and I'll tell you why. That's why it's all kind of kerbobbled. Um, I've shuffled and used this deck a lot, but there's a 40 card deck for the hero made up of cards from this set. This is cards from the Monarch set. Okay, it also has equipment. So you have like a piece of leg equipment and some arm equipment. It also has the hero and their weapons. So here's their weapons and um, of course more equipment. I would say this, if you want my recommendation on the absolute best learning decks, with regards to these, the best heroes to pick up if you know nothing about the game and you just want to learn how to play a card game, so you don't have any card game experience, this is it. Prism is, in my opinion, the number one deck to pick up to learn how to play Flesh and Blood. Period. End of story. And I'll tell you this, I there's no deck inside this box, okay? Look, it's empty. The reason it's empty is because this is the deck that I taught my six-year-old how to play the game with literally gave this sleeved up to my six-year-old, taught him how to play Flesh and Blood, because the mechanics within this deck are so easy to learn, incredibly easy to learn. And that's the beauty of the game, is you, you buy this 10 to $12 little box, you give it to your kid or to your friend, you teach them how to play a card game, and it's super easy to pick up. From this point, you can branch off into other things. Now, let's say you didn't like the look of uh, Prism and you wanted something different. 
this is also a fantastic way to learn the game. Oldham is a great deck as well because he he's very similar in the sense that like once you learn how the game functions, the core mechanics of like I'm attacking with this card and I have to pay for it, he does the same sorts of things. I be, attack with something big, I pay for it. You tell me what what you know you're gonna block with basically. So Oldham's also really good now. If you wanted two decks, for example, that kind of worked nicely together, uh, I taught my son how to play with Prism, and I played Bolton. The nice thing about both of these heroes is they're both light heroes, so some of the cards kind of branch across. So, like, there are cards in the Prism deck that are also in Bolton. So my son could understand when I played a card and when he played a card what that card did because I could explain it, right? Let's say you wanted to play a different matchup, maybe like a, a Light versus Shadow, which is what the set of Monarch is sort of designed around. These two are fantastic. It's a little, it can be a little Levia favored because of the, uh, the way that some of these mechanics for Prism work, but they're great like head-to-head -head matchups, these two are. And if you wanted a great step-up deck from these, Chain is a fantastic step-up if you like, okay, I understand how the core mechanics work. Now I want to try some more uh, complicated stuff. Chain is the go-to for that. Um, I would also say the same thing about Lexi. Lexi is the go-to for a little bit more complicated as far as mechanics go because she can like load the bow, but she has to load the bow if you want to fire arrows. Otherwise, you don't actually use the arrows. So there's like some extra steps involved in doing it. And it makes it a little bit more thematic and fun and feels more like you're firing arrows. Um, and then as far as uh, Briar, if you're wanting to play like um, like two decks that are well matched, these two are fantastic. If you want to play in the Tales of Aria set, uh, Briar versus Oldham, I, I am honestly, I was blown away with this deck. I think this deck is super fun and it's also a great way to learn how to play the game. So you could even go these two. In fact, I would probably say these two may be just the straight up most fun that you can have against each other. Uh, and then these two, if you wanted to kind of split up, may be a nice little matchup as well. But these decks, honestly, I, I would say this year, and I didn't say this last year when I made this this kind of idea of a video, this year, this is the best way to learn how to play Flesh and Blood. These products are exactly what they're designed to do. They do exactly what they're designed to do, and that's allow you to learn the game on an easy method. So this is step one. Now let's move on and talk about what you should do after you've learned how to play the game with these Blitz decks, where do you go from there? Okay, so let's say that you've uh, found some Blitz decks, you've played the game, you've learned how it plays, and you're like, ooh, I really enjoyed this hero, or that class, or, you know, this other thing. I, there's two different ways to go from this point, in my opinion, into expanding your game in Flesh and Blood. Way number one, okay, go to your local game store, and in fact, really, I would highly recommend that you buy those Blitz decks from your local game store. Buying local and supporting the local game store, huge, you should definitely do it. Go to that local game store and see if they sell singles, okay? If they sell singles, then I would just, number one, this is this is one way to, to go about um, advancing in the game. Buy singles for a class, or for a specific hero or blitz deck that you enjoyed, okay? Buy the singles that make that deck better. And if you're not sure what singles make that deck better, then you should subscribe to this channel because over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be making videos that are literally me taking this blitz deck and adding cards to it to make it better. That's, that's literally, I'm gonna have the content just rolling. So if you wanna see those, hit the like and the subscribe here on this video, uh, subscribe to the channel so you can see those. Uh, but buy singles for that deck. Now let's say you go to your local game store, they don't sell singles, oh no. Well that's very easy because you can just go over here to TCG Player and you can literally buy singles like crazy. Um, they TCG Player has a ton of singles for sale. As you would imagine, it's a card shop. So if you uh, if you go to Flesh and Blood, which is on the top page, as you can see, it's a very successful game here on TCG Player. You can literally just choose a set. Like for example, the first set ever released and you can buy Cranial Crush. Maybe you're like, Cranial Crush is gonna be perfect in my Oldham Blitz deck, and I think you're actually very smart. You're onto something, you should buy Cranial Crush. Uh, it's 350, you just pick it up, boom, done. You want some Scar for Scars, Reds? Maybe you're playing like, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe you're playing uh, Bolton, and Bolton's like really wanting to play Scar for a Scar Red, or I don't know, Briar, and you're like, ooh, I have an idea, I'm gonna play zero cost cards in Briar that attack for a lot of damage, uh, maybe that'll be good. Maybe it will be, you should try it. Buy Scar for a Scar Red. 
Oh, buy Snatch Red. Look, those cards are like 25 cents, a quarter a piece, 15 cents. Like, that's not bad. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm gonna hard commit. I'm gonna hard commit. I'm gonna buy one of the best cards in the game. I'm gonna buy... You buy Crazy Brew. Don't buy this card. It's a meme. But you could buy this card. It's a pretty good meme. Uh, Sink Below. You buy that card. That can go into literally every deck because it's a defense reaction. And that defends you from taking damage. Defense reactions are good. And Sink Below is the best defense reaction in the game. So buy a few of them. Buy three. It'll be $3. This is how you advance in the game of Flesh and Blood, is you buy singles. Now, there's a second way of doing this, and that is here on Channel Fireball. Channel Fireball also sells singles for the game, and uh, in doing so, you can also support my channel, which is kind of cool, but they have a, a new marketplace, and you may not know this. I don't know if you are, are up on Channel Fireball's setup, but they actually have a marketplace where local game stores can have their own storefront, kind of like TCG Player does, right? They have their own storefront, and they sell. Like, for example, this is Swords and Boards. There's Green Mana Gaming. So if you if you have any of these, like, Gamers Grove, I actually bought, like, back when the game came out, I bought stuff off of Gamers Grove website. website. You can literally buy all of these cards from these like local game stores and support the local game store, which is really, really good. Um, I also do, I wanna say, I do have an affiliate link with Channel Fireball, so if you're trying to get into the game and you wanna say thank you to me for making this video and, and helping you figure this stuff out, uh, you can use my affiliate link in the description and it would give me some support. This is another place you can go to pick up uh, just overall like cards and singles as well. Link in the description for both this and of course TCG Player. But always consider shopping locally as well because you're supporting your local game store. And as far as what specifically you should buy if you're looking to buy singles, I would highly recommend just going to a website like this, for example, which is uh, TCG Player, and scrolling through and looking at all of the Majestics. If I were to say one type of card you should purchase or one rarity of card you should purchase to upgrade decks, it starts, for me, it starts with Majestics, because these Majestics can just power up a deck more than you could ever imagine. Uh, the next thing after picking up Majestics for a specific class or a specific hero, and of course there are a ton of pages, um, go from Majestics to Legendaries. And I'll scroll down and I'll click Legendaries. Um, I will say this, there's a lot of people out there that are really off, like just put off by the price of Legendaries, and I totally understand that. But these are trending more and more downward. The, you know, the longer that the game has been out, these are really starting to trend into more affordable price points. Um, so you can see like these legendaries are like premium cards and their equipment, as you can see here, there's a few exceptions like Eclipse is not a piece of equipment, it's played in the deck. Uh, but by and large, these are all, and same thing with Doomsday, these are all pieces of equipment and you play these in every game for every for that hero that runs them and oftentimes they can be played for multiple different heroes so for example this scab skin leathers is the legendary brute equipment it goes on your legs but it can be played for Reinar, who's a brute it can be played for levia who we've been talking about which is a brute it can be played for a young brute hero called kayo so those three different heroes can use this and this card never rotates out so if you have this card uh, unless they ban the card for some strange reason, this card will always be playable, even if, for example, five years down the line, your favorite hero uh, reaches the living legend status and rides off into the sunset, and you play a different brute. Uh, same thing can be said for Guardian, for Warrior, for Runeblade, uh, for anything that uses elements like lightning. Uh <laughs> <laughs> like some of these cards can be used by multiple heroes as well. Like this can be used by two different heroes. And so you look at the prizes and you're like, those are expensive. And yes, you'll only ever, ever need to buy one vestige of soul and you'll be able to play it across multiple heroes and uh, forever. So this is the second step outside of those two things. I don't think you should necessarily need to buy fables. Okay, so if someone says you desperately need this fable, which is a really expensive card, it's like the chasest of the chase cards. These are the chasest of the chase cards. Uh, don't be scared by some of these numbers. Don't buy that thing right there. Don't do it, okay? I, don't do it. Anyway, these cards are not necessary to play the game. Uh, they are beautiful. I. I legit actually play this in one of my decks because it's really fun to play, but I don't need it. I could swap it for any other card and it would be fine. Okay, so I told you there were two methods of sort of advancing in the game of Flesh and Blood. Method number one is buying singles for a specific deck, hero, class, that sort of thing. Method number two is the way I did it. 
I literally bought boxes of product or I went to events where we cracked open boxes and I just got a bunch of commons, uncommons, uh, uh, you know, like rares is what they're called in this game or uh, I, I got like super rares from these boxes. I basically just played the game and got more cards. I did sealed events, I did draft events or I just bought a box and I cracked it open. So if you're interested in purchasing boxes, booster boxes, there's a couple of places that you can go to do that. The first one I'm always gonna recommend is, finish the sentence, Local game store. Yeah, buy from your local game store. If you have a local game store, you should support them. If they sell flesh and blood product, you should buy it because that helps local game stores a ton. Now, if you don't have a local game store that sells this product, well, there's a couple of options. One, I can hook you up with a game store here locally that literally is one of the earliest adopters of flesh and blood in, as a game in the US. And that's Reaper Game Store. You should definitely check out Reaper, Reaper Game Store. Bill is a friend of mine. He literally runs the game shop that's like not too far from my house. And he's been, you know, here in the community making events and selling product for Flesh and Blood since before the game released uh, because they ran like welcome events, which is kind of crazy. So you should definitely support Bill. I will also say this, boom! With the transition, DeckEdge.com. If you're trying to buy lots of boxes, if like I can't stress this enough, this is the best place online for buying flesh and blood boxes. Period. It's so good. He, he's the best. Okay, look, DeckEdge.com. You go, you buy boxes from him. Look, you can even get the Blitz decks here if they don't have it at your local game store. You buy them all. Just the the best website deckedge.com pick it up uh, go there you can pick up box product as well and of course he is like product from the different um, sets as well and this is true of other websites like I'm you can go to TCG player and you can just buy boxes from TCG player from local game stores that are selling on TCG player you can also do the same thing for channel fireball because again they have a marketplace where you can buy box product from these different uh, game stores that are selling in the marketplace. So these two allow you to buy from local game stores that are selling through the marketplace, TCG Player, and of course, uh, Channel Fireball. But Deck Edge is fantastic. It's just my friend, that's all he does. He just sells box product to people at really, really fantastic prices with really, really great shipping and customer service. And if, of course, if you wanna like literally support a game store that I know, Reaper Game Store, or find one local to you. And in fact, that's the first thing you should do is find one local to you. As far as what specific products I recommend you pick up if you're picking up boxes, here's what I'll tell you. Number one product you should buy universally and this is weird because it's out of print, is Crucible of War. If you can find Crucible of War boxes and you wanna buy boxes, that, like, that's what you wanna do, buy Crucible of War boxes. It's weird that I'm saying that, but this is the number one product you should buy, in my opinion, because the cards in this set supplement all sets. This is a set that feeds to all other sets, okay? And I will also say this, in a month and a little bit, we're having another set like this. Another supplemental set is coming out and it's called Everfest. If you don't know about Everfest, check the link up there. I made an entire video talking about what it's gonna be kind of like about. It's a supplemental set. It does exactly what Crucible of War does. That is also a set you should invest in, period, end of story. I am highly, I'm so excited for Everfest because supplemental sets do so much for the game uh, as far as expanding card pools. Now, if you, again, are super just dead set on playing a specific hero, buy the set they're from, okay? Because you'll get a lot of commons, uncommons, um, you know, majestics, that sort of stuff. You'll, you'll get the stuff that you need from those sets if you buy those sets. So if you're looking to buy box product, I always say buy Crucible first if you can find it, um, and then buy the specific set that you enjoyed playing a Blitz deck from. And finally, where do you actually engage in playing the game? And you know, how do you connect with the larger community? Because we started out with just getting our feet wet in the game. We figured out how to play the game by buying a Blitz deck. Then we got a little bit more competitive. We bought singles or we bought product and we opened it and we kind of made our deck a little bit stronger. We tooled around with the cards, we tinkered a little bit, we tried to improve uh, you know, our skills by incorporating new mechanics thanks to purchasing Majestics 
or legendaries or buying box product and opening up a bunch of cards and understanding how they work. So what do you do next? Next you, well, you play the game with other people, right? And hopefully you've been doing that this entire time. You've been playing the game with other people uh, since you started with a Blitz deck. Where do you go to do that? LGS. You, you play at your LGS. Your local game store hopefully runs events. And honestly, they should be running, hopefully, Armory events. Armory events are a fantastic way to uh, play at a sort of a step up level from your kitchen table uh, and win little promos, win prizes, maybe even win beautiful playmats. By the way, I forgot to mention, if you want to buy playmats, there's a fantastic amount of people making custom playmats for this game. Uh, and also the LSS playmats are just drop dead gorgeous. Playmats are a great way to really dive into the world of flesh and blood because there's a lot of good ones out there, including mine. If you want to pick up my own playmat, I got I designed a custom playmat, had had the art made and all that. Play the game at your local LGS. Play Armory events at the LGS. You'll connect with more people. You'll learn more about the game. You'll find new strategies, that sort of thing. If you don't have an, a local game store, again, you play online. Here's how you do that, and this is a short and sweet. You get a webcam, you point it down towards a play mat or a table, and you put your cards down on the table. Okay, you do this over Discord, uh, which is where it's most played. You could also do this over um, a, a variety of other methods. I made a video a long time ago about how to play online, and I should definitely fix that video up because uh, we could talk about that again. Uh, but if you don't know what Discord to play in, join mine in the description, okay? Because we play weekly events. We're like playing weekly events now where we're playing like very casual formats, which is really, really good. Also, you can join, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hype this one out. There's two. Uh, you should join the official Flesh and Blood uh, Discord, link in the description, where there's a lot of people talking about how to play the game, what heroes do. Uh, there's buying and selling going on of singles, that sort of stuff. And I definitely want to shout out my buddy Louie over at Kitchen Table TCG. They run multiple weekly online events. That is a fantastic service to this community. And I cannot understate that. They run multiple weekly online events where you can sit down at your kitchen table with a webcam pointed to your table and just play the game of flesh and blood with consistent showing up people. Like the people show up consistently week to week. So you'll get to know people. I cannot stress this enough. Those sorts of things should be supported. So if you want to play the game of flesh and blood, but you're stuck at home or anything like that, play on my Discord, play on Louis' Discord, play on the main Discord, in like engage with people on the flesh and blood fan page on Facebook. Probably the best fan page on Facebook, period. It's just the best fan page. Do it. Those are the places that you go to play this game. Start at your LGS. If you can't get out of the house, play online with friends. We would love to have you in our community. Period. End of story. Doesn't matter what community you're part of. If you're playing Flesh and Blood, you're part of the Flesh and Blood community, and we would love to have you. So that is a full and complete guide on how to start off in the game of Flesh and Blood. I hope you learned something about the game. I hope you learned something about starting it. I hope you enjoyed your time here. Uh, I hope 2022 is treating you well or treats you well, depending on when you're watching this. Um, and if you're just now getting into this game, you're getting in at a fantastic time to actually play and engage with the community. If you enjoyed this, hit the like and the subscribe. I won't take up any more of your time. Your time is important and you're an important person. I'm thankful that you chose to watch all the way to this point. If you did, as always, everybody, thanks for watching. <laughs>